When planning a trip to France, travelers dream of the Eiffel Tower, elegant Parisian boulevards, the sunny French Riviera, and charming pastoral villages. But often the most memorable moments of a vacation happen when taking part in local activities instead of just sightseeing. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 rated things to do in France. And just wait till you see what's at number 3, something you may not even have thought of, so make sure you watch till the end. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome travel guides and make sure to hit the notification bell so that you know when we publish a new video. So without further ado, let's cut to the chase. At number 10, be inspired at the Chartres Cathedral Organ Festival. During the Festival International d'Org, International Organ Festival to you and me, organ concerts, the Chartres Cathedral's renowned pipe organ brings inspiring sounds of sacred Christian music to the sublime sanctuary. Concerts take place on Sunday afternoons at 4.30pm in July and August. With a diverse repertoire and performers from all over the world, the festival offers sensational organ music from various centuries and musical movements. The association Grand Orgue de Chartres also hosts Les Soirées Estivales, summer soirees, free organ concerts on Thursday evenings at 9pm in July and August at Chantres Cathedral. Next up, at 9, experience a candlelit evening at Chateau vaux le vicomte Spend a magical summer evening at the Chateau de vaux le vicomte less than an hour away from Paris by train and shuttle. This listed historic monument is a masterpiece of 17th century architecture created by Louis Levant for Nicolas Fouquet, superintendent of finance to Louis XIV. The chateau is especially renowned for its grounds that were landscaped by André Le Notre. With its geometric proportions, harmonious layout and dozens of fountains, the chateau's 33 hectare gardens represent the first Jardin à la Française, French formal garden which became popular in Europe during the 17th century. On Saturday nights from mid-May through October 1st and Fridays from early July through August, thousands of candles illuminate the chateau and gardens for the soirée aux chandelles, candlelit evenings, capturing the ambiance of a legendary fete that was held at the chateau on August 17th, 1661. Yes, that's a long time ago. This soirée is a wondrous experience that immerses visitors in the romance of the Grand Siècle. Two fine dining restaurants, Le Chamille, only open on candlelit evenings, and Jean de la Fontaine's table allow guests to take in the dreamy scene while enjoying a gourmet meal. Candlelit evenings between 7pm and concluded midnight, fireworks take place at 11pm. Next up, at 8, bike around Bordeaux. The Bordeaux region boasts some of the most attractive scenery in France. Vine-covered rolling hills, grandiose castles and quaint historic villages. Cyclists may plan their own self-guided route or use a tour company to choose a cycling itinerary. A favourite cycling route from Bordeaux is the Roger Lapabi bike path in the entre deux mer region, an area appreciated for its lush natural landscape. Part of this route runs along the tranquil tree-lined Canal de Deux-Bers. After about 20 kilometers from Bordeaux, the Roger La Pébie path leads to Créon, an interesting medieval town that was once entirely fortified. Another popular bike route is the 50-kilometer ride from Bordeaux saint emilion a picturesque medieval village that is designated on the UNESCO World Heritage List because of its historic monasteries and churches. Travelers should also save time to explore the many attractions of Bordeaux, a UNESCO-listed city that boasts over 300 listed historic monuments. A captivating old castle awaits at the end of the 45-kilometer route from Bordeaux de la Château de Razan. This medieval fortified castle dates to the 13th century and was renovated over the centuries. The Château de Razan is open to the public for visits, including access to the tower, which affords superb views of the village and rural landscape. Shorter rides in the Bordeaux region include the 6km route from Bordeaux to Pessac, where visitors can admire Le Corbusier architecture, and the 29km route from Bordeaux to Margot, a village known for its gastronomy. And now, at number 7, learn to cook classic French cuisine in Burgundy. 
the cornerstone of Gallic culture, the French gastronomic meal has been inscribed on the UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage List. Each area of France has its own distinctive culinary style, but the Burgundy region boasts some of France's most famous regional dishes – escargot, cogère or cheese puffs, coq au vin, chicken stew, and bœuf bourguignon, beef burgundy. Cooking classes provide an immersion into the Burgundian lifestyle, with visits to local markets to shop for ingredients, instruction in preparing traditional specialities, and then savouring the delicious meals. You can choose from a wide range of culinary programs and vacations in the Burgundy region. American expats Marjorie Taylor and Kendall Smith Francini, a mother-daughter duo, ran the Cook's Atelier in Beaune. Their one-day cooking courses or six-day culinary vacation introduced participants to the delights of Burgundian cuisine and the Burgundy lifestyle. In the country village of marigné le caoué Catherine Frelon's culinary school offers seven-day culinary vacations at a 400-year-old farmhouse, Le Ferme de la Lochère. Highlights are the trips to Dijon and simeon en aujoua and lunch at a Michelin-starred restaurant. Sounds great! The five-day culinary programme organised by Robert Ash at Rue de Lac includes hands-on classes, visits to local markets and free time to enjoy the property's garden, sun terrace and swimming pool. Along with the cooking classes, accommodations are provided at a handsome converted farmhouse in the Beaujolais area of Burgundy. Sounds great! At 6, attend the Royal Serenade at the Chateau de Versailles. A soiree at the Chateau de Versailles offers a glimpse into the bygone world of French royalty and their lavish court. Every Saturday evening from mid-June until mid-September, visitors may attend the Royal Serenade, a dazzling event held in the Chateau's grand apartments, Hercules Room, Hall of the Royal Chapel, King's Guard Room, and in the opulent Hall of Mirrors. The Royal Serenade brings to life a scene of France's Ancien Régime, complete with period costumes, baroque music and dancing. This special event includes a reenactment of the King's dressing ceremony and a court ball. The Folie Francois Music Ensemble and the Compagnie de Danse Lavantel dancing troupe entertain audiences. Visitors can also join a tour of the Chateau Gardens before or after the Royal Serenade. On Saturdays and Sundays from April through October, the Chateau de Versailles presents musical fountain shows with its extravagant fountains dancing to the tunes of Baroque music. After sundown on Saturday evenings, from mid-June through mid-September, the garden's groves are illuminated by torches and candles for the night fountain shows, which feature music and fireworks. This event channels the opulent celebrations that took place during the reigns of Louis XIV and Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. Next up, at 5, discover the charm of artists' villages in Provence. Many famous Impressionist and Expressionist painters fell in love with Provence's quaint medieval villages and sun-drenched seaports, representing the gorgeous scenery in colourful works of art. The legacy of this cultural heritage is seen in the numerous museums and art galleries scattered throughout the region's towns. The medieval hilltop town of Saint-Paul-de-Vence has been popular with artists since the 1920s. Marc Chagall lived here for 20 years and during that time he painted prolifically. The Office of Tourism offers in the footsteps of Marc Chagall guided tours. Belgian artist Jean-Michel Follon adorned the Follon Chapel in Saint-Paul-de-Vence with splendid paintings, sculptures and stained glass windows. Other well-known 20th century artists also found inspiration in St. Paul de Vence and their works are on display at the Foundation Maët, a prestigious cultural foundation and one of Europe's largest modern art collections. Near St. Paul de Vence is another perched medieval village, Vence, worth a detour to see the Chapelle de Rosaire in the outskirts of town. Matisse added his post-impressionist decorative flair to the stained glass windows, paintings and art objects that adorn the chapel. saint rémy de provence is famous for its association with Vincent van Gogh, who stayed here for a year at the Saint-Paul-de-Mazoul Asylum. The Musée Estrine displays works by Vincent van Gogh and his contemporaries. Over 20 of the sites in saint rémy de provence that the artist painted are indicated on the promenade dans l'univers de Vincent van Gogh trail. Bio is a tiny village in the countryside where Fernand Leger resided briefly. 
The Musée National Fernand Léger displays the works of the celebrated avant-garde artist, from his impressionist paintings to cubist pieces. For such a teensy town, Bio surprises visitors with its abundance of art galleries and artisan shops tucked away on quiet side streets. Just 12 kilometers from Bio, the lovely little village of Mojan is also full of art galleries and artists' ateliers. From 1961 to 1973, Picasso resided at the estate of the Chapelle Notre-Dame de Vie, an ancient hermitage chapel and listed historic monuments surrounded by beautiful grounds. The chapel's treasury contains a small museum. Along the Provençal coastline, the sun-dappled scenery of the Mediterranean Sea lured many artists in the late 19th to early 20th century. An impressive list of famous painters, including Paul Signac, Pierre Bonnard, André Duran and Henri Matisse, spent time in the fishing village of Saint-Tropez. Taking advantage of the southern light, the artists created vibrant paintings of the old port and other sites in and around Saint-Tropez. The Musée de l'Annonciade displays an excellent collection of these paintings. The pleasant seaport of Cassis appealed to post-impressionist painters who captured the picturesque harbour and charming waterfront houses of Cassis in colourful works of art. At four, make a pilgrimage to Mont Saint-Michel. Soaring above its perch on a rocky island off the Normandy coastline, the Abbey de Mont Saint-Michel appears as if a vision from heaven. Mont Saint-Michel is known as the Pyramid of the Seas, thanks to its awe-inspiring and otherworldly splendor. The island's glorious Gothic Abbey has been a stop along the way of St. James' pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela since the 11th century. Medieval pilgrims walked across the Bay of San Michel's sandbanks at low tide to arrive at the Mont Saint-Michel. The bay crossing was the last stretch of the long, arduous pedestrian journey to reach this important Christian destination. The Chemin de Mont Saint-Michel, or Paths of Mont Saint-Michel, pilgrimage routes lead to Mont Saint-Michel from various starting points such as Paris, Rouen and Tours. These routes continue on to Santiago de Compostela in Spain. Modern-day visitors can follow in the footsteps of the medieval pilgrims for a meaningful spiritual experience. Today's pilgrims arrive by foot in the same way this journey has been approached for centuries. Walking across the bay takes about two hours and must be completed with the help of an accredited guide. Please note, it is not safe to attempt the bay crossing without a guide. Dangerous conditions define Bay of Mont Saint-Michel and its sandbanks, quicksand and powerful fast-moving tides. With an extreme tidal range 15 kilometers in each direction, the bay's high tide turns Mont Saint-Michel into an island for about one hour each day. Upon arriving at the abbey, pilgrims are rewarded with the awe-inspiring ambiance of an 11th to 13th century chapel. The Fraternité Monastique de Jerusalem, monastic communities of Jerusalem, offer religious services, Lourdes, Mass and Vesper, three times per day at the abbey church. The liturgy is conducted in chants, noteworthy for their harmonious polyphonic melodies. St. Michael's Day at the end of September draws many pilgrims to Mont Saint-Michel. This occasion celebrating the Archangel Michael includes several religious ceremonies at the Abbey Church. A solemn Mass is held on the nearest Sunday before or after St. Michael's Day and morning prayers and Mass take place on St. Michael's Day, September 29th. And now at number three, stroll through the charming old quarters of Paris. The Quartier Latin, the Ile Saint-Louis and Le Marais are charming neighborhoods where visitors can soak up the ambience of medieval Paris. Begin exploring on the left bank in the Latin Quarter, the city's university quarter since the Middle Ages. After discovering the eclectic shops and bookstores of this lively neighborhood, cross the Seine River at the Petit Pont Bridge and head to the Ile de la Cité to admire the façade of the Notre Dame Cathedral. The cathedral is currently undergoing reconstruction after being damaged by a fire in April 2019. From the Ile de la Cité, the Pont Saint-Louis Bridge leads to another island in the Seine River, the Ile Saint-Louis, an area brimming with old world charm. Wander the quiet pedestrian streets and browse the inviting boutiques on the Rue Saint-Louis en Ile. Be sure to visit the Église Saint-Louis en Ile, a lovely baroque church that was dedicated to Saint-Louis, King Louis IX, and then enjoy a treat from the nearby Glacier Bertillon ice cream parlor. 
continue by walking across the Pont Marie Bridge to Le Marais, an atmospheric historic district filled with old palaces and mansions. Take a leisurely stroll around the tranquil tree shaded paths of the Place de Vosges, a graceful square lined with elegant 17th century aristocratic residences, and then amble along the Rue des Francs Bourgeois, a narrow street with many fashionable shops. Next up, at two, take a Seine River cruise. Cruising the Seine River is a delightful way to see all of Paris's top sights while enjoying a relaxing experience. The Compagnie des Bateaux Mouches offers scenic boat tours, sailing past the Place de la Concorde, the Louvre, the Musée de Orsay, the Notre Dame Cathedral and other landmarks along the way. You can choose from a variety of bateau mouche experiences, including daytime boat tours, brunch or lunch cruises, romantic dinner cruises and cabaret shows. At night, the monuments along the Seine are illuminated, creating a truly captivating impression. The Compagnie des Bateaux Mouches kiosk is located at Pont de l'Alma, near the Eiffel Tower. And finally, at number one, watch the sunset from the Eiffel Tower. To discover Paris at its most enchanting, visit the Eiffel Tower at sunset. In the early evening, the gentle lighting has an ethereal effect. At this special time of day, from late afternoon until dusk, golden glows on the horizon lend a romantic quality to the vistas. From each level of the tower, the panoramas become even more spectacular as the sun goes down, with the city's monuments illuminated and the Seine River reflecting the stunning colours of sunset. Another bonus, every evening the Eiffel Tower is decked out with glittering lights that sparkle for five minutes on the hour. For a truly memorable experience, watch the sunset while dining at one of the Eiffel Tower restaurants. Madame Brasserie, the contemporary style brasserie on the first level that offers a seasonal menu with a focus on local ingredients, or the Michelin starred Le Jules Verne gastronomic restaurant on the second level that serves exceptional modern French cuisine. The dining rooms of both restaurants feature breathtaking views of the Paris cityscape. When making a reservation at Le Jules Verne, you may request a window seat. And there you have the top 10 rated things to do in France. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. Check out more videos on France in our French travel guide playlist. That's all for now. Until next time.